With multicam editing seeing another surge in popularity, I wanted to give you guys five different tips that I use on a regular basis that I think is going to improve your workflow and increase your speed. What's up, Internet? It's Robert Tegar. here back again with another video. Today we are talking about tips for multicam editing. If you're new here, welcome. I post content on a weekly basis on filmmaking tips and the business of being a creative. If that's something that you're into, stick around to the end and show some love by giving this a like and a subscribe, but only if you actually really like and love this video. Today we're talking about multicam editing techniques and tips, things that have helped me tremendously. If you're into multicam editing for a variety of reasons, whether you're processing podcasting, interview setups, all those sorts of things, these five tips are going to help you in your efficiency and your speed and making sure that your multicam edits go off without a hitch. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one. Now I've gone through this in other videos where I go through my entire multicam editing process, but I love to have a Hensel and Gretel breadcrumb trail so that I can constantly trace back what I've done in my edits. And this all starts with the setup. Although it is possible and efficient for you to just simply select your media that you know is going to be used, click right click and create a multicam source sequence. This is then going to group all of those things, create a synchronized sequence that you can then edit, but it already processes those pieces of footage into its own multicam source sequence. Now, I actually like to apply color and effects to the individual source clips that then feed into the multicam sequence. So what I do is create a source setup like this. I have all of the different things that I need from an effects standpoint that's been processed on these individual clips. And then when I go to make a multicam setup from this particular sequence, all of those assets transfer over to the multicam setup. Speaking of that, it's tip number two. Now, once I've created my source sequence and synchronized all those things together, I go up to that source sequence, right click and go to new sequence from clip. Once that happens, you'll see that it immediately creates a nested sequence that then we can turn into a multicam setup. If I go and I right click on this, go to multicam and hit enable, you'll be able to see that I now have multicams set up for that particular sequence and they all feed back to that source sequence. So, for example, if I go back here and turn off one of those cameras, I can go back into my multicam sequence. You'll see I only have two now rather than one. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of things that you can do when you set up this breadcrumb trail like I have here. Now, tip number three is that you can use nested sequences to create a variety of different looks that act as an additional camera in your multicam setup. Now, in a previous video, I had this setup where I was nested in the corner, commenting on different edits that I was making and tracking planar views in After Effects. Now, the way that I did that and created it as a secondary camera is I went into my source clip. I grabbed both my video and my screen grab. I duplicated those two things. I put the window of myself up on the top, created a mask that I could then scale by hitting shift and dragging this thing out. I can move the mask around. Now I've got this big giant thing of my face. You can scale that down to be however big you want to and then reposition this wherever you want to have it inside of the frame. Let's just say that this is what I want to do. Maybe give it a little bit of a feather, you know, spice things up a little bit. And then you basically have your face sitting there at the bottom corner of the screen. You've probably seen this stuff a lot. Now, the cool thing here is that I can click both of these regions by option shift clicking and selecting only the top. It won't select any of the audio. If I do that, I hit right click. I go to nest. I create a picture in picture nested sequence. And now this actually acts as a third camera. So I have this one, my actual screen grab by screen recording by itself. And then me is a full screen that I have there. So I can switch between each individual camera per se. But the third camera that I have is a nested sequence that has this picture in a picture. And you can use this in a variety of ways. If you need to do a two up and in an interview setup and have both individuals on the screen with some type of overlay in the background, maybe it's a step and repeat that's moving around. You can use nested sequences in order to achieve that as a third, fourth, fifth, however many cameras you want to be able to put on there. Now, my fourth tip for you is to use nudge. That's the N on the keyboard. You can switch into this nudge thing. Now, what is nudge? Now, as you're going through your multicam edit, my assumption is that you would be switching between cameras as you're watching your edit through. Now, let's say that you kind of make an edit that's a few frames too early or too late or however you want to do it. And you don't want to go back and recut it and make the sequence clean again. You can use nudge by hitting N on the keyboard and bringing up this little arrow, double arrow either side over here. 
and you can scrub your footage and bring your edit point forward or backward depending on where you want to make it precise. And you can do this on either side of the edit. Nudge saves me a ton of time because I don't have to go back and forth and recut a particular camera switch. I can just use nudge and, well, nudge the edit forward or backwards to the exact position that I want it to be in. My fifth and final tip I'm going to give you is to flatten your multicam sequences before you export so that you can decrease your export time. Now, why is this? Premiere is going to be constantly referencing all of the cameras in your multicam enabled sequence so that it's making sure that it's selecting the right camera in the export. So what we want to do is help it along by saying we only want this camera to be referenced and flattening the sequence is the way in which you do that. It's pretty simple. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it right here. Now, this is my sequence ready for export. What I'm going to do is select only the video layer by hitting option and shift at the same time and dragging my cursor across the entire sequence. I'm gonna right click, go up to multicam and hit flatten. And as you'll notice immediately, as I make these things a little bit bigger, you're seeing each individual camera that I have to switch back and forth from between my multiple FX3s and FX6s, but you'll see that it's ready to export at this point. If you want a bonus tip, I would actually go back duplicate your multicam sequence, name it flattened as if I have here, so that you again can increase your Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail, so that if the client comes back and asks you for any notes, you'll have something to go back to and manipulate rather than the working sequence that you exported. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, five different tips for multicam sequence editing that I know probably brought you some value. Let me know down in the comments below which one you weren't aware of. And if you want anything else, I would love to hear it as well for future videos that we put here on the channel. If you like the video, like the damn video, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and ring the bell for posting notifications. This is T-Garden with another video on the channel. See you guys next week. Peace.